This is In The Loop, I'm Christian Bryant. We got a lot on the docket today, folks, but if you are an ITL regular, you know we'll get to those a bit later. We like to kick things off with a deep dive, and tonight, we're talking about TV. Perfect topic, right? The TV landscape is changing, with viewing options moving far beyond cable. After all, if you're watching Newsy, you're definitely not doing it on cable. One effect of the wide range of platforms is that there's more room for a more diverse set of storytellers. For indigenous creators, it's ushered in a golden age of indigenous TV shows. Did you catch who did it? Not yet. What I done. Are you girls running away? Yeah. Damn, I'm so jealous. This is why it's not worth being friends with white people. And these aren't stories that rely on stereotypes or otherwise relegate indigenous people to history. A lot of these shows have more modern settings and lift indigenous voices both on and off the screen. The acclaimed Hulu and FX comedy drama series Reservation Dogs centers around four young indigenous people and is set on tribal land in rural Oklahoma. The show, with a second season premiering Tuesday, features all indigenous writers and directors and a mostly indigenous cast. Brotherford Falls, a sitcom with two seasons now out on the streaming service Peacock, has a writer's room where half the staff have indigenous heritage, and the show prominently focuses on indigenous characters and stories. And indigenous storytelling is thriving beyond comedies and sitcoms. AMC's crime drama Dark Winds has an all-indigenous writing staff and brings to life a crime fiction book series set in Navajo Nation. We've seen indigenous storytelling succeed before in other countries, often from filmmakers with government funding. That includes Australia, where films like 1993's Horror of the Devil were recognized at the Cannes Film Festival, New Zealand, which produced the Academy Award-nominated film Whale Rider, and Canada, where the award-winning 2001 film Aten Aryuwat, The Fast Runner, was later voted the greatest Canadian film of all time at the Toronto International Film Festival. In the United States, there's historically been less investment in indigenous film, television, and pop culture projects. But even without much state or federal help, indigenous creators here in the US are getting new backing to help them tell their own stories. Tribal governments have been working to become film hubs, including Cherokee Nation. We just announced our very first film to, to film using our uh, virtual production soundstage. They premiered this year at Tribeca. The film is called Land of Gold, and it will be on HBO Max. Um, I'm not sure exactly the timing on when it will be released on HBO Max, um, but hopefully this fall. And um, there's one of our first projects to be approved is called I Am a Man, which tells the story of Chief Standing Bear. Jennifer Lauren, director of the Cherokee Nation Film Office, told us the growth is happening because in the aftermath of controversies like the Oscar So White trend that appeared in the lead up to the 2015 Academy Awards, studios are investing in a more diverse range of stories and Cherokee Nation is moving in the same direction, investing in film subsidies and building a soundstage. But she says there's still work left to be done. We're part of the push to say, it's not good enough to just have the people, um, diverse people in front of the camera. You need to have them behind the camera. You need to have them in the writer's room. You need to have them in the boardroom. You need to have um, as many of those people telling their own stories as possible because as we've proven with our content in the Cherokee Nation, it is so much better whenever you have the people who are telling the stories for their own communities. The growth of tribal nations as filming sites is inspiring interest from Hollywood as well. Killers of the Flower Moon, a film directed by Martin Scorsese coming out this fall, stars Leonardo DiCaprio and tells the story of an investigation into murders of members of the Osage tribe. The film was shot primarily on Osage Nation land in collaboration with the tribe. Private companies are also stepping up to help tell indigenous stories. The Sundance Institute, which organizes the annual Sundance Film Festival, has an indigenous program that provides fellowships and labs for young indigenous filmmakers. Being an indigenous artist working in film um, or TV for that matter as well too, is, uh, you know, it's something that can be a little bit lonely. And I think until you kind of know that there's a, a community of indigenous people working out there and you kind of get connected with them, it's a little, um, you kind of don't necessarily know where to start, um, or you can kind of be, it can feel like you're sort of working in a bit of a silo. So, um, so as much as, you know, giving a lot of that creative and uh, financial support, you know, we're also there to kind of help people, connect people to the community of alumni that we have and uh, some of the other people that are just working in the industry too. And in April, Netflix announced that eight indigenous producers will participate in a producer's training program formed along with the racial and social justice organization, 
illuminative. So we talked a bit about the broader indigenous TV and film landscape, but we had a chance to zoom in on one show. Reservation Dogs has its second season coming out this week on Hulu and held its premiere in Oklahoma this weekend. Some of the writers, producers, and cast members reflected on being a part of the show that's breaking new ground for indigenous representation in pop culture. I think from top to bottom, having an indigenous writer's room, having an indigenous crew, having indigenous people, uh, directors, cast, top to bottom, like our, our fingerprints are all over it. And now to see like that we have indigenous artists who are uh, sort of elevated to this global stage who can help like other indigenous creatives and like sort of take them take them by the braids and you know and be like come on like let's see what you got you know it's time it's time and we're continuing to build and the expectation falls on us to do what they're doing and that is to uplift each other. Our people are just so talented and like we have singers, we have dancers and like we have like all kinds of filmmakers, like all kinds of talents. It just needs to be shown more. So, yeah, I think this is going off on a good start. I think Native people are about to have a moment here in Crazy.